I think life is a series of stepping stones, building blocks, and moments of opportunity. In my early years, my mom encouraged and taught me to love people. My dad taught me discipline and raised me up in the construction industry, teaching me all he knew, step by step. He did what he had to in order to make ends meet. We all did. Dad needed to figure out a way to make a living for his family, and he used tools. He used his hands every day. He worked diligently. At 18, I created a carpentry business with my dad. So when I think of what our companies accomplished when Dad and I started out with a skill saw and a cord, having total assets of maybe $200, I'm standing on the shoulders of somebody pretty amazing. The first 10 years in the industry, my annual income averaged $9,074. With a young family, the first 20 years, we averaged $17,000 a year. I wouldn't trade those 20 years of minimal income because it honed me. It was never about the money. I learned and grew from every failure and every struggle. And as I was being formed through that process, I was developing a relationship with the one who created me. Our first completed new home project was $252,000. Size and volume grew from there. We ultimately had more than $170 million of work in progress. I have the respect of an industry of people that saw me hammering nails for many years before I ever built my first home. Over time, projects became million dollars and then continued to grow into many multi-million dollar homes as opportunities evolved. There isn't just one watershed moment that made the difference. What made the difference is I stayed committed, focused, and disciplined to doing the next thing, whatever that might be. I knew I had to stay the course, to work with excellence, make the right choices for the right reasons, not what was easy or convenient in the moment. Building a multi-million dollar business wasn't easy. Life isn't easy, but creating meaning from your hardship is what gives you purpose, creates your character and the drive to keep going. And it was a process, a process of continual becoming to get there. The truth is, I can't do any of this on my own. I never have. I'm completely dependent upon God. That's who I want others to see in me and my work. What do others see when they look at you? They may see a man, a woman, a boss, a leader, a friend. But if they look deeper, what else do they see? Or more importantly, who? So many of us spend our hours our days, our lives focused on the what? The success, the fame, the paycheck, the bottom line. But the truth is, these are all mirages. They're images we project that have no substance. Ideas that are not real about who we really are. I've found the most authentic person we can be and the greatest work we can do is found not in ourselves, but in the one we reflect. Just as a still lake reflects the splendor of the mountains and the sky above, so we are called to reflect His light and love and beauty. This is where the extraordinary comes to life in the ordinary, because it's in the place of reflection that we realize that any task, from hammering a nail, to editing a spreadsheet, to hosting a dinner, to building personal resorts, can reflect God as long as it's done for His glory and not our own. So now is your time to reflect on your life and who people see when they look at you. Reflect on your past to build a better future. Reflect on your time, your thoughts, your habits, your decisions. But most of all, through the power of the Spirit, reflect the radiant glory of God in all that you do. For this is what we are created to be. Glorious Reflections.